Hey guys, it's the kid here, and uh, today I want to show you how to make your triad lock smoother. So first off, we're going to look at the pivots. Uh, in a cold steel knife, typically, typically you get a phosphorus brown washer, and under that you get a um, let's see, what is it called? A Teflon washer. I'm not going to take that apart, but essentially, what you do, you can't do anything to the Teflon washer, but what you can do is get some newspaper and some 1,000 grit, 1,500 grit sandpaper. Go to the 1,500 grit sandpaper first and polish the washer. And then go to the newspaper and polish the washer on the newspaper and you'll get it uh, much smoother than normal. Uh, the second thing you'll need to do is you'll need to uh, disassemble the knife again or as you are polishing the washers, uh, you can have your knife taken apart. And the next thing we're gonna look at is the spring. Uh, on these triad lock knives, the spring is extremely strong, and uh, this is one of my critiques of the triad lock. I love the triad lock, but uh, a lot of people, uh, men included, have problems functioning or uh, disengaging the triad lock, and uh, there's a lot of women that can't even operate a cold steel knife, and uh, I think it's somewhat of a shame. I know we're getting a lot of strength, but it would be nice to have a smooth as possible knife. And anyways, you can see there is a chamber um, where the spring is uh, located, and that's where the chamber go that's where the spring goes is in this chamber. So what we got to do in order to uh, decrease the leverage that the spring has on the lock bar is actually move the lock spring uh, forward about. A half a centimeter or so. So, uh, and how I discovered this was I was stripping my American Almond of its Teflon coating and I put it back together and I accidentally did that myself. I uh, didn't seat the spring all the way back into the lock and um, it, when I put it back together it was way smoother. It was probably the smoothest knife I've ever seen until I did this one. Uh, some things to note, uh, is you will need a T8, turn that around correctly, and a T6 driver. Um, and you will need to be knowledgeable of taking knives apart. Generally, cold steel knives are uh, considered very easy to take apart, but uh, you know, you might be voiding the warranty when you take this knife apart, and plus, when you start messing with the spring and the mechanism, you can't expect cold steel to really take care of the warranty after that. So uh, I would be cautious. I mean, they might be uh, have mercy or be generous and take care of the warranty for you. Uh, I'm not totally sure how this affects the lock strength when you do this, uh, but uh, the knife will operate smoother. And we compared it to my brother's uh, Strider, and uh, it the, this Code 4 knife was actually smoother than uh, a $500 Strider. So I'll cut film and then I'll come back um, and I'll show the uh, lock in its placement where the knife operates the smoothest. So I'm not going to do this on camera because I do not have a tripod and my brother isn't here to hold the camera. So I'm going to cut film and then I'll be back. Alright guys, I'm back. I just um, I took the pivot and the blade off in order where I could get this moving freely. I popped the spring out and uh, as you can see the spring is slightly out of the chamber. It's probably moved uh, half a centimeter or so. And as you can see, let's see, one second. The lock disengages much easier now and the pivot just fell out. So I'll have to cut film and I'll assemble the knife and we'll try out the action. But as you can see, the, uh, the spring is slightly out of the chamber. Um, so there it is. Alright guys, we have the knife completely assembled now, and uh, the pivot is tight, and the other uh, T6 screws, or T6 set, T -set, set screws, are now in place. There's no up or down, side to side play, I just checked, and uh, we have a smooth operating knife. I can actually whip it out with my middle finger with very little effort. You can disengage the lock with my finger.
And uh, my brother will tell you on camera, he isn't here right now, but this knife is smoother or just as smooth as his $500 Strider. Uh, but some things I would note is when you go to disengage the lock, the lock bar does rise higher than it normally did, uh, than it you know typically does. And also, since uh, the lock spring is halfway out of the chamber, not halfway out of the chamber, it's moved up a little bit, there's a possibility the knife will not stand up to shock as it normally did. Um, I really don't know. I haven't tested this yet. Uh, there's also a possibility the lock strength could actually be weaker, but I actually really enjoy uh, the action of the lock now. So I think the lock is a little bit more user friendly, and I think it's going to be stronger than most locks uh, from uh, a typical manufacturer, anyways. So uh, the ease of the ease of use is really an important factor when it comes to a blade, especially. Uh, where we're talking about people with weaker hands. Now I have strong hands, but it, it certainly is nice to have a nice uh, a knife that uh, flows smoothly from the pocket and then it uh, will disengage very easily. And you can almost work it like an axis lock. Just using my finger to uh, decompress the spring. Um, but yeah, I personally wouldn't expect uh, a cold steel to honor the warranty. Uh, the knife is probably going to be a bit safer with the spring engaged all the way. Um, but it would be cool if Cold Steel actually uh, had some knives uh, with an action like this from the factory. I mean, in my opinion, Cold Steel is probably one of the top five uh, knife manufacturers in the world right now. But I think their status would increase if they had knives that uh, came from the factory this smooth. Uh, I mean, people love a smooth flipping or, uh, you know, a, a smooth action on a knife. That's what's really, that's what's hot right now. You look at all the titanium frame lock flippers and they're all just extremely smooth. The Sabenza is known for its smoothness. And uh, I would really, I've never handled a Sabenza before, but... If it's smoother than this, it would be really awesome. Which you know, if you pay five, six hundred dollars for a, um, you know, a folder, it better be smooth. But this is a very reasonably priced knife with a nice hollow grind, which I like. Uh, I like flat grinds as well, but hollow grinds are really nice, and you get uh, a little bit more stoutness at the tip because the blade is similar to an I beam in a way. Uh, but yeah. That's something to think about. Uh, please give me your comments and feedback. And uh, oh yeah, I was going to mention um, if you're worried about this, I, I'm probably not going to try it. But if you're worried about the lock spring slipping out somehow, you could probably JB weld or epoxy the uh, the lock spring in with it moved slightly forward. Now I wouldn't necessarily recommend that, but it's definitely something worth playing with. Uh, but tell me what you think about the modification video and uh, try it out and I'd love to see some video responses of people with some smooth action cold steel. So uh, thank you for watching and uh, I'm out.